welcome back. And this week, we're heading deep south for our first big craft show of the year. That's right, this week's video is all about our whole new craft booth setup, our DIY craft booth setup. We've made the whole thing. We're gonna test it out this week. So we thought, not only should we test it out, we're gonna take you on the journey with us. How did we get there? The good, the bad, the ugly, setting it up unloading it, setting it up, breaking it down. We're gonna show you all of that and take you on that journey with us. We got six hours and there's gonna be a lot of ugly, so let's load them up and <laughs> head them out. We are so excited about our new display racks that I couldn't wait to get them in the trailer. <laughs> but once we were getting them in there, we realized they couldn't lay flat up against the front of the trailer. So we ended up splitting them. In hindsight, they probably should have went in last along with the rug because those are gonna come out first and get it set up first. But the great thing here is we were able to get three wagons wide, three rows of them. They went yeah. in perfectly. This is Garrett's camera angles to Nowhereville. Oh, what do you mean we're not gonna stop? We don't get to stop this out of the border? There's no, uh... <laughs> There's no uh, Starbucks here. Welcome to South Carolina. South, South Carolina. <laughs> All right, we had to stop and get some food, and I had to pee. So we stopped at the tr Truckle Mat. Truckle Mat, I call it Truck Wash. We're not at the Truck Wash. Yeah, we're, we're at the we're Truck Wash. The Thought I'd get a little bath at the same time. <laughs> okay, it's 3 p.m. We've been traveling since about. 11.30, so we just stopped and grabbed a sandwich, and we have about... Two hours exactly. Two hours, two hours to go. We're in somewhere in South Where's Carolina. It? Three hours exactly. No, yeah, it's 5.46, we have two hours and 45 minutes. Right there, I can see it. Um, there were a couple of last minute signs that didn't make it into the wagons, you can see those in the back seat. And... That's it, it's kind of cloudy. Do you see it's kind of a cloudy day? It's not sunny, it isn't even a yeah, fun ride. It's not sunny. Oh, it's been an okay ride. We've been watching some uh, <laughs> some of that iPad. Catch it up on a little missed TV things. I, I try and recite what's going on to Garrett, trying not to get him to look over. She gives me a, uh, like a good narration. And we don't really have a hotel yet. I already know the hotels in the area. Nothing was a good price. I couldn't decide which one I wanted to stay at, so... Um, We're winging it. Yeah, kind of winging it. I guess when I get off of this little update right now, I'll go book us a room. And that's it. I'll let you know when we get there. We have to have... We have to be set up by 8, 8 p.m. Yeah. So our arrival time is 5.46, so we'll have about two and a half hours to get set up. Oh, I think 30 minutes would be plenty, especially with the new setup. I yeah, mean, did you guys see that loading? That was beautiful. Yeah, I think the loading only took like 12 minutes. Our only lesson learned from our new setup is the <laughs> hand uh, truck, hand truck should have been in the back. Yeah. And it's all the way in the front right now. So, so we gotta take everything out to get to the hand truck. So that's to our- To take everything inside. Yeah, that was, that was kind of our so, lesson learned. Yeah. But next time we will know and I guess that's it for now. I'll give you an update when we get a little closer. See you in a little bit. Okay, here's where the ugly comes in. Seems like it, but I see some trailers down there. Let's go see what's up down there. All right, 6.30. We have to be set up by eight. I still think we have plenty of time. Now we just need to figure out where to unload. There's nobody here to say. Um, these guys are not unloading, they're just, they're done, so. Do you want me to go in the front and find out where it is? Just keep going this way. 
You can turn, you can fix it once you get straightened out. All right, he finally gets it in there. Now, Tanner was nice enough to edit out the 72 point turn it took Eric to get this trailer in there appropriately because he was, it was too much of an angle and our trailer was trying to hit the trailer beside us. But ultimately he pulled in, backed it up, pulled it in, backed it up. Robin's racing, Kim. <laughs> and then he came out bragging. Yeah. Who's the trailer master? Who's the trailer master? Look at that. I'm all in my spot. Here, you can take it. It's still recording. <laughs> <laughs> Look how dead on I am. So here I'm sharing that he was lucky enough that our booth is like the second booth in from the back right here. It was the perfect place to park. <laughs> it was the perfect place. And I knew that. You didn't know anything. <laughs> and you could see that we had to pull everything out of the trailer to get the racks. The dolly. The, and dolly, the dolly was all the yeah. way in the back. There Put it the is. the racks and the dolly <laughs> in the back. So we had to go get that before we could actually start setting up. And then here we are. There you go. One, two. All right. We were the third booth in. <laughs> That, this was super easy. That I mean, just rolling out the carpet was easy, but setting up our new display racks so easy with the easy feet. You know, once Kim got the the width correct, <laughs> <laughs> he's just yeah, slid right there's in. There's a little argument there. Too far apart. Too close together. Too far apart. <laughs> uh, but then once we had to shift them around, they're also pretty easy. You know, just move the feet and the whole thing moves. So. I, I enjoy these new display racks. Yes, yeah, so very. I think it gives it a much more finished, complete look than the wire racks, which I love. They're super durable. They're they're great, and they have their purposes. But for us, they were just a little too heavy. They pinched my fingers every time I tried to disassemble them, and I was hoping to give a little more of that wood feel to the booth. So this is doing exactly what I wanted to do. And these little banners here, these little banners totally work. People stop and read them and scan the QR code almost every time. All right, we are here. We are all set up. It's only 7.30. Took us, what, like 45 minutes to set up? All right, not so bad, I drew bad. this whole thing up. The only change is I thought I'd have some panels on this side, so we might have to keep working, but... These are our DIY panels. What do you think? I love them. Easy to set up. Yeah, they were super easy. Easy to train. Lightweight. Yeah. And what do you think of our outdoor rug? Makes you think of front door. See how it goes. Yeah, I feel outdoor. I might, outdoor I might kick the shoes off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a very quick rug. <laughs> All right. I'm going to get something to eat and take a nap. I will see you in the morning. All right, good morning. Day one of the Columbia Craft Show. We have everything set up. And we have extra storage behind the booth. We'll go behind the booth. This is where we hit all of our wagons. So we have two wagons full of stuff. And we started hanging stuff on the back of these. Kim's added all of the little price tags. We engraved our own price tags. And I think we are good to go. The pegboards work out great. And we're using these little hooks to put them on the holes for now. But we're looking to get dowels so that we can hang them on the fronts and the backs. Just take it, you know, just a little bit higher level. But otherwise, I think we're ready to go. Looks like a good show and it looks like a lot of good advertising. We saw a couple of billboards and commercials this morning, so I think we're all set. So this is where I decided to invade all of our customers' privacy and secret, secretly record everybody. But here you can see the flow is coming up from behind us, so everybody comes in the first row, up and down, and then they come up our row here, but the great thing is, you can see that carpet is kind of keeping those strollers outside of the booth. And the great thing about that is that more people can then walk into the booth. So 
previously if we had one stroller in our booth and one person that was it the booth was occupied until they were done uh, with the grass down it's the an invisible barrier yeah it's, it's like that like invisible dog collar for strollers <laughs> for strollers yes yes so that's one of the lessons learned that i didn't even anticipate but that was great because it leaves more room for other folks to walk in and with the length of our booth you could see that everybody gets to dip in and dip out they get they're able to swing in view all of the signs and if they're not going to purchase swing on out it and keeps the flow of traffic moving in that 10 by 10 people would get clustered in there and I feel like some people would pass on by not being able to see what was in the booth. Or be able to know that they couldn't step in. Right. And the other thing is we're not right in the middle now. Our checkout booth isn't right in the middle. So they don't feel the need to have to make conversation with or, us. Or even eye contact. Yes, or even eye contact because we were, when they stepped in, we were already behind them. So that we were there if they needed us. If they looked for us, we were absolutely there. All right, Kim sent me out to the trailer again. This is where we keep all of our stuff. We're right there behind the dumpster is the door. And then I just come out every time when we need a new cart or a wagon and I pull it out of the trailer. All right, that is it. Day one in the books. Kim will see you tomorrow. All right. All right, I don't, I don't know what, if we're in frame or not. But <laughs> day one is in the books. We're in the parking lot right now. Look, our, our tip for like day one or Fridays is there's a lull in the afternoon. It gets a little boring. Yes, for Friday afternoon, I think things started slowing down by 1.32 o'clock. Yeah, it's like after lunchtime. It so really show ended at seven. So we had five hours to, I mean, people came by but there wasn't a steady stream of people coming by, especially like for, by three or four o'clock. Yeah. It was really dead. Really dead. And that's when we started looking for snacks. Let's oh, yeah. go, let's go try the the fruit dips. First I get snacky, then I get sleepy. Oh no, you first got sleepy. As soon as he ate lunch, he had an apple and- Some salad. Some salad. And then next thing I know, he was like, he was like this. But then the funny part was, and you don't even know, but after like 20 minutes, you were like this. <laughs> he was slumping further and further and people were like, oh, he's big help. And I was like, yeah, what a big help. <laughs> that was a big help. <laughs> so, I mean, but I, I did wake up and I, and I tried to stay busy the rest of the time. I tried to stay busy by designing on the iPad. Kim tried to stay busy by by abandoning the booth every 10 minutes. Well, that's what I do. I go and I meet people. That's what you got. It's not what you know, it's who you know, it right? You so I would go work. out, make friends. We that's when I start that, bartering. We met a lady we that had, today. what, pitched to the Shark Tank or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. She's been on uh, QVC. QV, no, HSN. HSN. HSN like 50 times. Yeah, we, you get to meet a lot of people. I met a couple that never stops doing shows. In the winter, they head south to Florida and hit that craft show circuit. And as it starts to warm up, like now, they start to head back north. That's our new plan, Dave. That is our, <laughs> that's my plan. He was like, all right, we gotta hurry up and get that RV. Yeah, that was the other thing coming in today. We saw the oh, RVs yeah, saw parked the RV right by the people. gate and we were like, Hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to spend probably, I think it's around $400 for the three nights. Yeah. And we could have just stayed in an RV. That's right more there. than I an can, RV payment. I can see the RVs from this parking lot right here. <laughs> we could have walked here in the morning. We had to get on a highway to get here this morning. And then we spent money at the hotel, although we did get some free breakfast. Free breakfast, yeah. And speaking of free breakfast, I got to go get something to eat right now. So we will see you guys in the morning. Good morning, day two. We got some snacks for our booth so that we don't have to uh, eat all that junk food all day. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was fun at first, and then you're like, okay, that's just not healthy. Yeah, then you just feel <laughs> bloated half the day. Back in the booth for day two. We're just setting up. They just opened the doors. The booth Saturday. Is still looking good. Saturday is usually busier. We don't have much downtime Saturdays like we do Fridays. No napping today. I don't know about that. 
That's still up in the air. <laughs> End of day two, we had a lot of visitors come yeah, by, like a lot, a lot of, of patrons came and stuff. And visited us, yes. It was great. I had a, lot, I had a, I had a good time today. I had a small, small nap. Got busted by a visitor. But we're getting ready to go get some Moe's. This is the good part of hitting craft shows, is all the food. I gained a lot of weight on the shows. <laughs> we'll see you in the morning. Good morning, day three, Spring Craftsman Classic, Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, we had a pretty good show so far. Yeah, so far so good. We've had a great weekend. Garrett's birthday weekend, so we had a little so extra fun this weekend. A lot of people came by to visit. Yeah, I so. thank you guys for coming by and saying hi to us. That was really fun. The displays are holding up beautifully. They did everything we wanted them to do. Everything looks good. Okay? Yeah. It's uh, trying to do some autofocus bro. So Sunday is usually a little slower than Saturdays, so we'll see if our luck continues through the weekend. Yeah, looking like some empty spots yeah, where empty sold spots. out of some things, so we'll take that back and use that information for next week's show. We learned we learned some things. I can't wait to share with yeah. you what we've learned with our display racks and our new little rug here and our Booth and a half. We went booth and a half this yeah, year. Booth and a half. Yeah. And Maybe I noticed double that booth of pins on the show. It doesn't feel as crowded when people come in, so I think it's working out. Yeah. We'll share some of those things with you when we get back to the shop. So I look like a lumberjack with this camera angle, but and I'm blocking the camera. But the transaction that just occurred is. Uh, Heidi and her husband uh, came up, introduced themselves, they watch our YouTube channel, and Heidi's husband is... Um, 30 uh, years in a sale, as a sales director. Yes, so the funny thing about this was Garrett and I were just negotiating on whether or not to greet customers. He's like, do not attack them, just let them browse. And I, I said, said let no. let the signs sell themselves. Yes, that is what you said. And I said, no, have you ever taken any kind of sales program? You greet your customers and you share a little bit about your product. And he was like, no. So we had just been debating this. Yeah. I right. mean... We were we were in the middle of debating this when, yes. when Heidi and her husband came up to the booth and while Kim was talking to Heidi, I was talking to her husband. I'm so sorry I forgot your name, but the information you gave me was life-changing. Yes, seriously. <laughs> so as we were talking about this, he was like, do you greet your customers when they come into the booth? And I was like, nope, I let the, so the signs sell themselves. And that's when he explained that he had 30 years in the sales business and that I need to open with every time that these are handmade. He goes, these look so nice, people might think you're buying and reselling. Yeah, they need to know the, effort, the yeah. time and effort that went into this and that you are the artist that created these and handmade each of these. <laughs> and he's like, that will go a long way in, in making a sale. And just as he finished that up, a would-be customer walks into the booth and they're just perusing. And he says, do you know that uh, each one of these is handmade? Look at the details. Look at the details. In this sign. And they ended up buying a sign. And well, and Heidi says, and, which one would look best on your front door? Yes, they are such great salesmen. I learned so much in that short period of time that they're in our booth that we're gonna rethink how we uh, greet our customers. <laughs> yeah, I. it was, it was a little bit eye-opening. Yeah. Well, yeah. the universe was saying, "Hey, Garrett, let me give you a little extra information." Yes. <laughs> if you don't believe Kim, we're going to reinforce it with an expert. We weren't able to intro the breakdown of our booth. I mean, it was easy. But what happens is they start to play this race music, like the old-timey racetrack music, and everybody gets into race mode. Yes. Nobody is in a rush setting up, but everybody is in a hurry breaking down, and I'm going to have to say I get caught up in it. Yes, yes. <laughs> I am one of those lemmings racing towards the cliff. Yes, it, it's, it is... 
it is exactly what you would use, music you would use yes. to narrate a race. Uh-huh. And Garrett just, yes. It gets, he gets, everybody gets in the mood. <laughs> I mean, the parking lot gets crazy. You can see that everybody around me is also breaking down in record speed. Not that it's just in fast forward, but everybody is breaking down in record speed. It's, uh, I think there's somebody standing there with a stopwatch. Oh, and, and they also make the announcement of basically, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I swear the lights get a little bit brighter. I didn't hear last call. <laughs> Everybody's racing for the exit though. Did you know you could get all of our files, behind the scene content, and even a Kim and Garrett After Dark podcast? as well as monthly Zoom calls, access to a secret Facebook group, and we'll even send you one of these fancy t-shirts, all for $20 a month. It's the best way to support this channel. So join us over at patreon.com. All right, we made it back safe and sound. I didn't even run out of gas. <laughs> it was a quick trip home. We had our favorite stop at Bucky's. That was exciting. Bucky's is a and crazy then place. If that's you can in, go, go. That's in South Carolina, and then we just, Rest of the way home. One quick stop for gas. Zippity home by 1230. Going to load up that trailer again and head on to our next craft show this weekend. Coming up, we'll be in Richmond, Virginia, right here, three miles from our shop. Yeah, I like them when they're closer. All right, we are about out of time. So if you're not going to join us for the patron after show, we'll get in a little deeper at some of the crazy stops that we made along the way. <laughs> And we will see you next Friday where we'll do it, build it, and make it again. And there's nothing to balance. I have to go un do you wanna, unload the Do you want to balance me? Oh, yeah. Get up there, babe. <laughs> <laughs>